Mr. Chair. The Minister. Well, thank you very much um, uh, for the uh, interventions by the previous two members. I shouldn't have to explain to uh, the previous speaker. That's right. You should not have to. You should not be I shouldn't have to explain to the previous speaker why he is here. Uh, he is here. I don't know why he is here myself. Uh, but uh, the purpose of this bill, the purpose of this bill is a very clear one, and that is to uh, introduce a modern licensing regime for the patent attorneys. And there seems to have been a great deal of confusion on the other side where they have conflated two different elements of the bill. The fundamental part of the bill is to introduce a licensing regime, trans-Tasman licensing regime for patent attorneys in order to, uh, because the one that we have been operating under for a number of decades uh, doesn't have some basic uh, uh, elements such as a code of conduct any disciplinary regime and all the sorts of things that we would normally expect to be part of a licensing regime. And uh, as has been mentioned, uh, the idea uh, in the Trans-Tasman setting uh, with the agreement between the two Prime Ministers was to introduce that Trans-Tasman regime as part of the broader uh, single economic market uh, progress that uh, we've been making good progress towards. And, uh, and the idea of that is to, in order to to have a quality patent uh, uh, attorney's uh, industry across the Tasman so that New Zealand businesses who are, uh, can protect their intellectual property more effectively. Now, the, the two elements that they keep on referring to, uh, my, my, my friends across the other side of the House, uh, relate to the single patent application and the single examination processes. Now, these were two uh, processes. Now, when this was introduced, uh, when this... Oh, it's not the main. It was one of the substances. The, the, the primary substance of the bill was introducing a patent registration regime. Now, now, if I could relate the history uh, for the benefit, if I, if I could relate the history for the benefit of the members, wh what we had here, what we had here when the bill was introduced uh, to the House in November uh, 2015, uh, it included the proposition, which was a uh, bespoke trans-Tasman a single patent application and examination process. Now, uh, running parallel to that uh, had been a long ongoing conversation at the World Intellectual Property Organ Organization, the WIPO level, to develop uh, a an international uh, examination process uh, called the EPICT system. Uh, and uh, there was a great deal of uncertainty as to whether or not that would actually uh, occur. And so when we introduced the bill, uh, we included the Trans-Tasman uh, uh, operation uh, as, uh, as a good way of operating. But uh, we were also conscious of the fact that it's possible that an international regime could come along and supersede it. And that, indeed, is what has happened subsequent to the bill's introduction. Uh, so in June this year, uh, to the surprise of many, actually, the, uh, the WIPO e-picked uh, system uh, has been uh, concluded and uh, has general agreement around that. And so uh, the, the rational thing to do, uh, given that, um, that development, was to say, well, actually, it no longer makes sense to uh, try and develop a bespoke trans-Tasman single examination process when we can achieve the same thing at an international level. And so uh, we uh, got very strong feedback through the process, and uh, that's why, <laughs> and that is why, uh, that that part of the bill has been withdrawn. And so uh, we're left with a bill that does a very effective job, uh, I believe, in drawing together a trans-Tasman patent regime uh, for the registration of patent attorneys. And I do welcome the broad support that this bill has across the House, and I do uh, welcome uh, the contribution from uh, me Member Cosgrove to say that there's no politics in patents. Uh, and uh, I think we should keep it that way. So thank you very much. Mr. Chair.